What we're going to try to do is use our powers of calculus to find this blue area right over here. And what this blue area is, is the area in between successive loops of the graph, the polar graph, R of theta, is equal to three theta sine theta. I'm graphing it in polar coordinates here. And just to make sure we understand what's going on, this first loop gets traced out when theta goes between zero and pi. So this is zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to pi. And you can, that makes sense. When theta is zero, this whole thing is zero, but then as theta increases, our r increases as well. But then as theta goes back to approaching pi, remember sine of pi is zero, so then this thing will approach zero again. So that makes sense. But then as we go from pi to two pi, you might expect to see some type of a graph down here. But what you need to realize is when we go from pi to two pi, sine of those thetas are gonna be negative. And so what it does is it flips over. So instead of having an r right over here in the third quadrant when we're a little bit past theta being a little bit more than pi, since r would be negative, it flips over and then it ends up right over there. And so between, for theta from pi to two pi, we actually trace out this second circle right over here, this outer one. And it makes sense that the radius is getting larger because we have this three theta right over here. So as theta is getting larger and larger, in magnitude, we should say, the magnitude of our r is getting larger. It turns out that the r is, it would have been up here if it was positive, but then it goes negative. It goes out here, but it has a larger and larger magnitude because of this three theta. So with that out of the way, let's think about how we find this area. So in general, if you're looking at a polar curve, and if you want to find an area, the general notion is, well, you would go from theta is equal to, let's just call it alpha, to theta is equal to beta. So this would be your bounds on your angle. And what you do, and we've shown this, we've given you the intuition for it in previous videos, it would be one half times r of theta squared d theta is the general formula for finding the area inside of a polar curve. But what we're trying to do here is find the area between two successive loops for this polar curve, where as theta goes from zero to two pi. So how do we do that? Well, one way to do that, we could find the total area in this larger loop, the total area in the larger loop, and then subtract from that the area in the smaller loop right over here. So how do we do that? And at any point, if you get inspired, pause the video. It's always good for you to try to work it through yourself than just passively watch me work through it. So let's do it together. So let's, what's the area of this outer circle if we even include this right over here? Well, that's going to be the integral. Remember, the outer circle gets traced out as we go from pi to two pi, and it would be one half times all of this business squared. So three theta, sine of theta squared d theta. That's the outer circle. And then from that, we want to subtract the area of this inner circle. So minus, well, what are the bounds there? Well, we said we trace out that inner circle as we go from zero to pi. Zero to pi, one half times three theta sine of theta squared d theta. Now it turns out that this, these are not trivial integrals to solve on your own, but we have tools. In fact, if you're taking a lot of classes, they expect you to be able to use tools. If you're taking AP Calculus BC, they would expect you to be able to use a graphing calculator. So that's what we're gonna do right now in order to calculate this quantity, in order to calculate this area. So let me get out my TI-84 emulator. So there we have it. And let's see, I want to be able to, I want you to see my keystrokes. So let me see if I can remember that. So the first, well, it's the same thing over again. It's just different bounds. So the first time, so what you want to do is you want to go to the math functions, math, and then you see right over here, this is your definite integral function. So I'm just going to scroll down there. So definite integral. And this TI-84 plus CE, I guess, writes it in a nice definite integral notation. Sometimes you'll just see that FN int, open parentheses, and then you write the expression, you say what you're integrating with respect to, and then you give the bounds. But here, it's pretty clear. So remember, that blue integral right over there, 
I want to go from pi, so I'll do second, that's the pi button right over here, pi, to two pi, two second pi, and then I'm going to have one divided by two times, times, and I'm just going to do it with it with respect to x. It doesn't matter if I do if I do all of the thetas instead of thetas, I use x's. So I'm going to have, and I'm just doing that to make it easy to type into the calculator. So this is going to be three x sine of x, and then I'm going to want to square this entire thing. So sine of x, whoops, I don't want to go there. Sine of x, let's see, I have that doesn't close that parentheses yet. Okay, so that closes that parentheses, and so I want to square that, so squared. So there you have it, and then I want to do dx. So that's that first blue integral, and then from that, I want to subtract, so I'll get my math function again. I could just click nine, it does the integral again. And now I'm gonna go from zero to pi of this same thing. And so I'm gonna go from zero to second pi, and I'm gonna try to type in that same thing. I am doing one divided by two times, open parentheses, three x sine of x, close that, close that, so that's that, and I'm gonna square it, square it, and then I have my dx. So then I do dx, and if I typed in everything correctly, I should just be able to press enter and get the value. And I got 139 point, well let's just go around to the nearest 100.53. So this is approximately 100, 39.53 square units.